uit op Facebook, Twitter, Instagram en YouTube. Jij weet jij wel. Goeienavond, jij is ingeskakel op die Spectrum Show met Ilzaan Miller en ons het twee so, speciale gasten vanavond. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Matlochon Olympiti, you can call me Klochi for short, and hi. Hi, okay. and? Hi, I'm Shana Benada and I'm a news journalist for Warpath. Welcome guys, and tell us a bit, why are you here tonight with us on the show? So, um, each... Thursday at 7 p.m. We as Vapa talk about various topics. Um, we choose topics that was highlighted from our Instagram and what stood out. And then we just have a discussion about it. Tell the readers a bit more. Yeah, exactly. So on tonight's show, we have a hot topics for you, including Clash of the Titans. So, Chanel, what can you tell me about Clash of the Titans? Clash of the Titans is organized by villages residents and mm. Heimat residents, so that is um, off-campus residences for those of you who don't know. Mm. They have various artists who's going to perform, Ruaksang, Jewel Santastis, Drums and Drums, St. Peter and Pisangskele. And there is going to be a boxing match between villages and Heimat. Oh, wow. Big. <laughs> boxing matches are extremely popular these days in Porch. Yeah. It's very effective, I think. Well, um, Overs and Excelsior have mm. their annual boxing night every year. And um, there's also going to be a Miss Titan crowned at this yes. event. Uh, a lot of specul- uh, people speculate that basically the Clash of the Titans is a copying of that, of the boxing match between the two. Yes, well, they have a lot of the same aspects, the mm. shows, the boxing. What makes them a bit different from the Overs and Excelsior mm. boxing match is that the Miss Titan is not, it, there isn't something like a Overs or Excelsior Miss Boxing Night. Mm. So that yeah. is the one aspect where they have a different. Miss Titan, yes. So basically, Miss Titan is every is every residence, ma- female residence competing with that Miss Titan. Miss Titan has been going on for a while, actually. Now they're competing with marketing and everything because I know a lot of Miss Titans has to film their own videos for marketing. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So they are u- using Miss Titan as kind of a marketing scheme. Mm. So every resident sends like one lady in to represent them, and then they have to make like a video and sell tickets, I think. Mm. And um, that is that's free marketing, basically. Basically, free marketing. And we have exciting news. It's Derby Week for Veritas and Patria. Par, uh, Patria. Excuse me, Patria. So, what can you tell us about Derby Week? So, Derby Week is a competition. It happens every year mm. between Patria and Veritas. So, they are seen as brother residents because mm. they are literally right next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and so, they compete in all sporting mm. activities. I know on Monday they played rugby. Mm. Yesterday, there was netball. Um, there's various kinds of sports where they mm. compete at to win the Derby Week Cup. But it's just sports. It's not anything else. It's just the sports. Activities. Yes, it's yes, a sport yes. activity competition. Oh, great. And yeah, that's for this weekend. The Clash of the Titans is this weekend on 11th of May. Yes. yes, on 11th of May at Snowflake with performances, Pisang Skille, Jewels Fantasies, everything like that. And then Derby Week. When is Derby Week again? It's the entire week. The they entire started week. on Monday and okay, they end yes. on Saturday. Okay, great. And up next, we have a special guest, Lynn Dewey, yeah. and she will be talking with us for our visit with Dr. Rassi up next after this short break. Rock out. Sing along and check us on social. Head to Fick FM 93.6 on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You know you want to. Six. 
You're listening to You're listening to Pek FM 93.6 points more than just radio Goeienaand, jy is nog steeds ingeskakel by Pek FM 93.6 with the Spectrum show with me Ilzan Miller and our special guest. Hello Lindiwe. Hi, hi Ilzan. How are you? I'm good and yourself. So, we were just talk- I was just asking these lovely VARPA journalists what was all the hype about last Thursday. There were a lot of people in the Amphi. What was that about? So, for people that don't know, um, um, Dr. Rasi Erasmus was on campus as well as the Springboks captain Sia Gulisi were here. And the main reason why um, they were both here was that um, Rasi was getting an uh, honorary doctorate from the university yes. and this oh, was wow. in um, coaching science yeah and you attended as well as Chanel and you as well yes I was the spectator oh. <laughs> she, was, she was getting us all the news outside <laughs> you were the fangirl standing yes, outside yes. so but Chanel has a very interesting story to tell with the video of that making in the process of Lovers Lane so um, I attended the event, but just before my event, I rushed to the arm because I wanted to see what is going on. Mm-hmm. And I came to Lover's Line. I literally couldn't see past anybody. Mm. I asked two of my friends. I was like, you're going to have to climb on each other's necks now because I need a video. <laughs> they were like on each other's necks. And then <laughs> they literally built a tower for me just to get like the Aww, perfect shot. Interesting. Oh, Jams. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> that is very um, beautiful because also I share the same sentiments because mm. It was not easy getting that video that I needed to do, um, getting off the hype outside. But with the help of my friends as well, uh, we were there, made sure that we get the content that we needed because we knew that everybody was talking about this and we wanted to understand exactly, do people understand why the hype is all about here? Mm. Because something that I found interesting is that um, Dr. Rasi is a UFS alumni, but Something that was interesting to me is that why is he getting his honorary doctorate here? A lot of students ask that question, actually, Mm. and there are three main reasons for that, of course. Obviously, because Rasi has a lot of strategies. We Mm. talked a lot about it at the sports show. He has very unique strategies. Chanel, you can wait in here with uh, awesome reasons as well. Well, um, at the ceremony, they pointed out that obviously he's the first coach to lead South Africa to two yes. World mm. Cup victories. Yeah. So mm. that firstly is like an insane honor. Mm. Yeah. And then he, they talked about his strategies, his marketing skills. He also served on the board for yes, SI Rugby. Yes, yes. So that was also noted. And then his contributions as a player. If you didn't know, Rossi was a rugby player before he yes. was eighth coach of, of course, the I mean, Springboks. Yes. You can't be a coach and not play. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's not how the saying goes. <laughs> but yes, Rossi has a rich history with rugby mm. as well. That is the understatement of the year, obviously. But he was not alone. Sia Kalusi joined him as yeah, well. It was so exciting. It was yeah. really exciting. And the shocking thing is, it was nine thirty in the morning. It's quite early for everyone standing here hyping at Lovers Lane. At Lovers Lane. For a student, I came especially off, for. A yeah. I came after my semester test. To wow. go. I didn't go. Well so done. You also wanted the content. Yes, <laughs> I did. You guys, I rushed through my semester test to make it in time. I was literally um, writing my test, running across campus just to make it in time. Wow, yeah, it's, the it's the dedication. It's the dedication. The dedication for me. So, did you um, get a chance to ask him questions, Lindy? Way or no? It was a press release mm. where um, all the media houses were there mm-hmm. and. Uh, mostly it was focusing more on um, the people who mm. were here from outside and we really didn't have a chance to actually ask in-depth mm-hmm. questions because also he um, had a short period of time with us because he had to go to another appointment. Oh, yeah. uh, but uh, also Chanel can touch on that as well. Yes, well, um, it was very rushed because the mm. news release took a while because everybody wanted to photo with Rossi. Mm. But after, there was only 20 minutes for questions mm. and we didn't get a lot of speaking terms because News24 and like big journalists were there mm. and they, it was well. yeah it was also broadcast um to it, so we just waited our turn and we unfortunately didn't get it in mm-hmm. but afterwards Rossi was was already late for his appointment and he still took time to like take a photo with us introduce himself so I think that is um something that really stood out to me because mm. he, he wanted um he put our interest 
just before his own, just mm. like for his us. Humility. Yeah, because yeah. it's a big deal for us. For him, it's not a big deal to meet us, but we were like, we really want to meet Rossi. So it's very nice about that. That's yeah. amazing. Sure. Once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> It really, it, was. It, really, oh. it was. It was. It was also because we are at a peak of our careers and this is what we want to do. Like, um, So for him to actually take the time and actually take pictures with everybody else um, also says a lot about the respect that he has for the institution itself. Yeah. You know, for, for us to really recognize him and give him that honorary doctorate means a lot to us. Yes, yeah, and does. obviously... Poch is a very, Northwest is a very small province mm. as well. And we are one of the universities that stands out, obviously, the most. If you want to study in Northwest, obviously, you come here to study. Mm. So it's very a big deal for our university as well to give a doctor's degree mm. to such an amazing person, especially someone that plays such a big role in South Africa as well yeah, with definitely. history and everything that. It's very good. It's amazing, actually. And imagine the PR hyping mm. with everything. Because as you said, Chanel, there were a thousand journalists here from every network. Mm. News24 was here. Which were SABC here? Sport SABC was here. Was here. Mm. Um, ENCA was also mm. here. Supersport was yeah. here. So all the big brands, um, yeah. the media houses were here. Can I tell you a fact I read on the stream media? They said... Um, the whole Rossi thing coming here it reached 9.6 billion people via oh, yeah, it, online it media did. and it newspapers did. and TV. But, yeah. but I mean, the videos on Instagram and Facebook yeah. and everything, we just saw videos. And the amazing <laughs> thing I loved about it, I saw, just saw purple, gold and green. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was oh, yes. purple, yeah. gold and green. <laughs> <laughs> just standing there, everyone was hyping up. I loved it. But so that, what stood out for, for me as well was in, in, in the auditorium. Mm. And Chanel can attest to this right after having to hand over the certificate to him. And then Iggy came in, <laughs> gave him a t-shirt, and another certificate was just beautiful. It changed the whole it mood was. in the auditorium. It was just beautiful to witness. Mm. Yeah, yes, and um, of course, um, Siakulisi accompanied him at mm. the Northwest. And he went to greet every Young Guns player, that is mm. our rugby team who won um, the cup this year, with the hand and congratulated them. That was also wow. very nice to see because yeah. he took time. Yeah. He, he walked up to them. He greeted them. Congratulated them. It says a lot about his character. Yeah. Very yes. good sportsmanship. Mm. Very, and that's a very big thing mm. for. And he flew in the all the way from France as well. Yes, but I think that was a very good tactic because everybody was like <laughs> shouting at the crowd. See ya. <laughs> and I heard like this Afrikaans guy was shouting, "Captain, oh my captain!" <laughs> <laughs> it was so I mean, funny. He would, we wouldn't have the coach here alone because more than anything, we wanted to see Sia. If yeah, you, we did. Exactly. If you say spring box, you want to see Sia. Yes, we do. We need and to that see. golden trophy also. Yes. <laughs> yes, he did. He bring he brought the cro- yeah. golden trophy with him as yeah. well. The web eggs. Do you know what was also funny? Like he took the trophy off the stand, and somebody was walking behind him with the stand of the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> but I w- I would have volunteered to do that. Of I, course, I mean, yeah. of course. Imagine walking behind Sia Kulisi, guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but. We're going to have some interesting news and groundbreaking news from Pochestrom locals in our next break coming yeah. up next. <laughs> Stay tuned. Jy is nog steeds ingeskakel by Pak FM 93.6 met ons spectrum show met my Ilzan Miller en my twee prachtige gasten van Wapad. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, what hot and last topic do you got, ladies have for me tonight? Bourbon Street is closing. What? <laughs> Are you serious? Yes. You're just as sad as the rest of Pochestrum. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's um, very, very upset about that. I just, I'm, I'm shocked, guys. I'm shocked. So, for our audiences who listen out there, Bourbons has been, this has been talked for a while now, actually. Bourbons closing because the building is already sold. And the bu- building has been sold for 
20 million rand. Oh, 20 wow. million rand. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. Yeah. And um, we only have one month or two months left before it closes. Finally. Yeah, um, you guys are going to have to plenty, <laughs> plenty of time because mm-hmm. Ribbons is closing in a month or two. But for our viewers' sakes, why did this happen? Well, um, the owner of Bourbon Street was concerned about the safety, mm. which is actually very an, a very nice thing because he's worried about the students' safety. That's why he yep. closed it in the first place. I mean, I understand why. I would, as well, if I was the owner of a club or a bar or something, be concerned for the student safety because imagine something happening and you playing a part in it. Yeah, and the bolt is not really safe. The bolt is not safe because the bolt is very dark as well. Mm. And the owner of Bourbons is Albert Bowman. And he is also the owner of Snowflake as well. Yeah. So, but he's holding the building for an NGO, Fire and Fragrance, mm. if I'm correct. Yes, you are correct. So, NGO is a Bible school. A Bible school. So, it serves as a church, but it's also they do like Bible teachings mm. and they do outreaches. It's a, um, the establishment, it's a very um, big in South Africa. Like, mm. they have. Um, a lot of campaigns. Yeah, they have a lot, they, of, a lot campaigns. of Yeah, they, and buildings. They are very well well known for their work. And they're in, in association with Unite 180 as well. Yes. With the building <laughs> next to it, I think. On top, but Unite 180 is on top. Yes. yes. And they are not related to one, Unite 180, but now Unite 180 is at the top and Fire and Fragrance is yeah. at the bottom. So obviously there, there is going to be some kind of relationship building with that, with the Bible school. But tw- 21, 20 ra- million rand is very is a lot of money guys and speaking of a lot of students comment actually about because Vapot posted a story recently about this weekend about bourbon's closing yeah mm-hmm. there was an article posted and we got a lot of comments mm. from Puck alumni and from the students mm. and a lot of people raised the question like how did you manage to gather 20 million rand how did they manage to get that kind of funds Honestly, it's an NGO, so they have access to a lot of funding. And the question is, how long have uh, they been planning to come across Bourbons? Maybe the owner was in association with them and they were planning to close Bourbons for a long time. Well, the owner said um, he got a lot of offers, but Mm. he chose to establish, they call it a geestelijke footprint. A spiritual footprint. Yes, Yes. on um, the build. So it was by choice that he chose this establishment for Mm. the um, place to sell it to. It wasn't like the highest offer or anything. He chose this Mm. establishment. He he chose the owners. He didn't chose it for the money or anything like that. That's very humbling. That's very true for his character. It says a lot about his character as well. But I heard a lot of students are complaining about the economy going down on the boat because obviously there are a lot of food places on the boat. And a lot of people are making their money with students buying food after they went into Bourbons. Yes, um, I think like Varsity Cafe is on the mm. build and we've got Inslip and Chicken Lican. Yes. So it was kind of like a tradition in Port. You go to Bourbons and then you go yeah, to Chicken yeah, Lican yeah. or Varsity, ca- um, Varsity. Yeah. and now also the build rules have changed so mm. the liquor license is only until 2am so that is going to change the whole environment for Port because oh, usually it's wow, like yeah. You go out until four a.m. Mm-hmm. Like that was it's, the that was the yes. ritual. It's gonna change the whole dynamic because obviously people are planning. Oh, we're going to Texas, then maybe Impala, then we're going to skit in Bourbons, and then we're going to Chicken Lick and finishing the night off. And now the whole dynamic is changing because Bourbons is closing. A lot of uh, places are not. Um, opening until um, closing until four. It's now until two in the morning. Mm. So the question is, how is it going to change? And people are already upset because MVG is closing as well. MVG closed as well. Yeah, yes. Close. And and it's now a new club though. Yeah, um, club Fika. Fika. Yeah. Fika. Yeah, it's Fika. <laughs> club Fika. I haven't been. I don't know if you guys have been. It hasn't opened yet, but I feel like they just. Um, establishing it, yeah, just it hyping it up basically yes. to <laughs> gain a little bit of more crowd. I don't know if things are going to ever be the same on the board again because 
as you said, the owner of Bourbons was afraid of the safety. And he even said he's fearing for becoming it like the Strip in Pretoria. So for the, our audiences, if you do not know what the Strip is, the Strip is a street basically like the Bolt in Pretoria where a lot of clubs and bars are, but it is very unsafe. Yes, they um, also have that club, Latinas, that yes. night groundbreaking news. That was also part of the Strip. Yes, yes. That was, and basically he is fearing that is going to be the same dynamic as the strip which is true because with our last spectrum so we discussed mm, actually yeah. about how unsafe the bolt is and how a lot of women feel unsafe to walk even if it's not for bourbons or anything like that just to get food at varsity cafe it's still very dangerous and i understand completely why that is but it's changed a lot now because mm. in first year i walk from my residence to exactly. um to the bolt and nowadays i feel unsafe just walking from my car into varsity like I don't know even, what is going on. Even it's now, walking on campus, I feel unsafe. N- never mind walking outside the street or anything like that. I feel the entire dynamic has changed with Porch. And maybe, I don't know, a lot of students are upset about Bourbon's closing. They even had petitions signed up. <laughs> yeah, that was very funny. <laughs> the building is already closed, guys. Please the building leave the is petitions. already sold. <laughs> there is nothing you can do about it anymore. But we appreciate the spirit of it. We appreciate... To students taking initiative, yeah. leaving it. Was, it was kind of funny. I got the petitions and everybody's story, and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna maybe help." And then I realized, but the building is already the sold. Yeah. Is There's already nothing sold. we can do. Contracts are Cut signed. your losses. Go yeah. out one more time. <laughs> Just move uh, on. A lot of students are saying we are losing a piece of history. Actually, about Portugal. That's very true. Because mm. um, you know, when you meet someone who studied at NWU, mm. they're like, "Oh, is Bourbon Street still That's open?" Very true. Yes. A lot of parents. Of my friends are asking me, oh, is Bourbon still open? I used to hang out there in my youth, the Oda, the Lakrda. <laughs> the Huya Oda. The Huya Oda. <laughs> and a lot of people are sad about it. And I mean, the Huya Oda was a boy failer. So, yeah, of course. But I think, like, it's sad for me that a piece of history mm. is, is getting shut down because that was what. Pochestrem was known for like mm. when people talk about Pochestrem, they don't talk about uh, like this team won this mm-hmm. cup. Mm-hmm. They talk about bourbons and they talk about yeah, music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like th- that is what Poch is known for. Exactly. And you, as a listener, can comment and talk with us with our next sports sh- um, spectrum show on zero seven eight nine double one two four eight zero because that is all the time we have for tonight. Yeah, I know. That's sad. That's so sad. But join us next week because we are still having Valpod members coming and chatting with us for our local news, everything updated with sports, with sports, everything you can think of happening in Portchesterham. So thank you so guys so much for ha- chatting with me. And this has been Spectrum with me, Yozan Miller, and I'm Ashokunolo and Chanel Vinadal. Yes. Good night and stay safe, guys. Good night. <laughs>